I think a lot of it comes back to authenticity. Like I am trying to make sure that I don't create a business built around just making stuff that's gonna sell because it's gonna sell. my sweet sleepy studio buddy penny it's show and tell time because i got some stickers in yesterday i didn't have the funds to do like the big sticker order that i was anticipating so i just restocked the three stickers that i really felt like i needed a restock of and then got two new designs let's show the restocks first because that's not quite as fun and exciting save the best for last so first restock was the badger and radish this one was a bestseller very quickly. Something about this guy just speaks to a lot of people. I think he's real sweet. Yeah, so I'm excited to have more of him in my shop. The next restock has been in my shop for a long time, but he consistently sells the best out of almost all of my stickers. It's our friend, our savior, our little hardworking pal, Mailman Duck. He sold out again. I've restocked him twice now, I think. This time I got I think I got 100, so we'll see how long he lasts. Maybe this is only 50, I can't remember. The other restocked design I'm doing is this one, um, my little mouse and crocus. So this mouse and crocus were a design that I did for Bring On Spring last year, and it sold really well, really quickly. Um, actually, the badger and radish were also from the Bring On Spring sticker designs as well, but this guy did pretty well. I wanted to I'm st slowly transitioning to having my stickers be on colored backgrounds rather than white. So for example, my mailman duck is on a white background, whereas this is like a really, really light blue. I find pure white doesn't really fit my style very well. I do a lot of like warm, muted colors and that sharp, bright white tends to, I find not quite complement my designs as well as I'd like. So I redesigned this one. The Badger and Radish and Duck I just kind of ordered the same as usual but I wanted to redesign this one because I really felt like this sticker in particular would have more of the like overall feel that I wanted to have with that softer colored background. Okay, <coughs> that's not a joke. Now for the exciting part is the new stickers. You would have seen a reveal of the illustration for this one if you watched my last vlog. But we have Wizard Cat. I think he turned out really, really cute. The colors look really good. He's just cute and fun. And I don't have any cat stickers yet. So is that true? Am I lying? No, I don't think I have anything with cats on it. This cat reminds me a little bit of story time. My old roommates and I, who are still my very best friends, we together adopted a pair of tabbies that were bonded kitties. And they are the sweetest cats I've ever met, Florence and Rowan. I still, every time I get to go visit them, I love them dearly. They ended up going with my roommates when we parted ways and moved to different places. Although conveniently, they only live around the corner from me now. So I get to see them and the kitties all the time, but loosely inspired by those gray, gray tabbies. They, he doesn't have like tabby coloring, but he is gray. And uh, this is a little dedication to my pals, Florence and Rowan. And then this next one is another animal that I don't have in my shop yet. I guess I'm slowly trying to add every animal I love, which is a lot of animals. We've got this sweet little cow. Not really sure exactly what inspired me to, to do a cow sticker, but I love it. I feel like it um, turned out really, really sweet. And I think it will make a great addition to a water bottle or notebook for anybody who has a soft spot in their heart for cows, like I do. So those will be up in my shop soon-ish. See how things go. My main projects at the moment are finishing my wedding invitations. Our wedding is in September and it is currently the end of January. It is sneaking up very fast and I wanna get our uh, wedding invites in the mail. I'm doing like a postcard design and just getting our invites printed as postcards because postcards are significantly cheaper than getting like an actual card printed and it's gonna be a pretty big quantity so I don't want to make them at home myself even though I 
have the ability to do so. Postcards are just pretty cost effective and will be nice quality and I don't have to print them all myself since I've got my own businessy stuff to worry about. All I have left to do for that is just do the little, I'm doing like a little illustrated design that's going to go in the middle of it. I'm also working on a gift for my dad which is going to be a painting of him and their dog that passed away recently. Sweet little Dexter. He unfortunately got really sick really suddenly a couple of weeks ago. It was completely unexpected for everybody. I think the consolation for all of us who love Dexter is that he didn't have to suffer for very long. Um, it's always so hard to say goodbye to pets and it always is just even when the best case scenario happens which is that they get to be released from this world peacefully and they don't have to suffer and I know that that's the the right thing and the best thing I thought I was done crying about this. I've cried. I've cried so much in the last couple weeks. It's been a good reminder of what the process of grief feels like and how it's never what you expect. Someone told me once grief is not linear and I always remind myself of that when I start to feel any kind of anguish about what the grief process looks like, feeling like I shouldn't be feeling the way I'm feeling, but it's always different every time. But anyways, I digress. Making that painting for my dad is something that I'm doing in the next week because his birthday is next Saturday so I think I want to give it to him for his birthday. I haven't decided yet whether it's going to be a traditional or digital piece. We're gonna... I think I might make something digital and decide if I'm happy with it like that or if I want to replicate it as a painting. I also am really trying to get back in the habit of a regular sketchbook practice. The busyness of the holidays and all the projects I had on the go have kind of pulled me out of that but not that life is necessarily significantly less busy now, but it is really important to me that I keep drawing regularly because the only way I think I'm going to keep getting better and getting closer to being able to express myself with my art the way that I feel I need to is to keep practicing and improving my skills and just doing it all the time is the best way to do that. So more sketchbooking on the horizon, I hope. share some updates of what I have been working on today. I am trying to figure out how I want to edit and print the three new prints that are going to be coming to my shop. Hopefully if I can get them to work the way I want them to. This is the one that I'm concerned about because this was originally a canvas painting that I actually sold at an art walk back in the summer but it was very well liked so I thought I'd take the scan and turn it into a print but I'm having a hard time doing justice to the colors in print form, probably because it was originally a painting and getting it to print in CMYK and have the right colors is the problem. But I'm gonna mess with it a little bit, see if I can come up with a version I'm happy with. I might end up doing some recoloring of it through Procreate and Photoshop. I don't, I'm not sure yet. The other two were done and edited mostly digitally, so hopefully it should be a little easier to get a print that I'm happy with. Most of my morning today was spent working on my wedding invitation. I did this little tree logo for the, it's kind of just like the little feature illustration in the center of the invitation because when we get married we will be the woods because my fiance's last name is wood so that's kind of our casual theme. Yeah, we thought it would be cute to do some trees on the invitation so we have that. And then I was also, I'm, I'm getting the invitations made as like just as postcards because it's going to be the cheapest way to get them and it's something that people are probably just going to toss out anyways so I don't see the point in spending a ton of money on anything super fancy. If we had an endless budget, yeah that would be cool but 
I'm happy with what we've got. And now I've got to, um, I'm going out on some shopping errands with my mom. We're gonna do some thrifting and just a couple little things here and there. <laughs> I have a market coming up in two weeks, so I've got a lot of work to do. I have to restock a whole bunch of my products. I have my new greeting card paper, so I have to make all of my cards with the new paper because I want to slowly transition over to that. I also have to decide what I'm gonna do with all of my stock of my cards on the old paper because I don't really wanna be selling both simultaneously because one is so much higher quality than the other and it just feels feels wrong to me i'm thinking about running like a sale at this market like it's selling what's left of my stock of the old kind of paper for super cheap or something but i haven't figured out it yet so that's on my list of things i need to do for that so i'm gonna hopefully print a bunch of cards this afternoon and maybe get some sticker sheets going as well because i wanted to stock up on those too and maybe just do a little bit of the other market prep related stuff but I'm hoping to be able to work for a couple hours and then take the rest of the afternoon off to just relax and enjoy my Sunday. A quick before you go I just wanted to I showed a little bit of it but this illustration that I'm doing for my dad so far I think it's turning out really good. I am really happy with how the background turned out. This I was kind of using a new technique that I've never done before where I picked the main color that I wanted and just used my, I've been really into the Max Pack, Retro Max Pack brushes, specifically the Gouache Flow brush lately. So I used that brush, filled in most of the background in my main color, and then I went in and Procreate to the Harmony section and chose, I think I was using either Triadic or the Tetradic option to give you like colors that go well with with that uh, i don't know the right way to explain this it basically gives you other colors on the color wheel that will match nicely with what you're already working with and use those to kind of i just as randomly as possible kind of splash them in and blended them into what i already had and then just kept layering like that until i got a look that i was happy with and i am particularly excited about the look of this because i've in the past had a really hard time getting <laughs> Kelsey's outside shoveling. It's beautifully snowy outside too. There's lots of big white fluffy snowflakes, but the walks need to be shoveled. And Parker does not like it when Kelsey goes outside without him. I'm particularly excited about this because I've really struggled in the past with making backgrounds in Procreate that look the way I want them to. I often end up doing stuff traditionally and scanning it just to get the right like kind of painty look that I like. So this technique really worked really well for the effect that I wanted. So. I'm very pleased about that. I 
I hope you enjoy Kelsey's whatever he's doing downstairs in the background. There's a few cards. I'm glad I just ran this little analysis on my stock and what I've been selling the last year because I realized that there's two cards that I didn't even sell once in any of my markets or online this past year. So it tells me it's time to discontinue them. And that is these two cards. These were two of the first designs I ever did. This one, I miss you very much. And this one is was meant to be a condolence card. I think I missed the mark on what the tone should be for a condolence sympathy card. Um, so they're both gonna be 50% off until I run out of stock. So I just changed that in my shop. So if you want either of these, they also still can be bought for buy five, get one free on my website. So if you're watching this after the market, I'm gonna be running that sale in person as well. So we'll see if I have any left. Go see if they're still available in my shop if you want any of these. So basically what I did here is I used a combination of the statistics tools statistics tools on Shopify and just a very simple Excel spreadsheet to I looked at um, I made like a, an analysis that showed me how many of each of my card designs sold in the last year and then so I basically am calculating of the amount of paper that I have to make cards with right now. In the past, I used to go ask Kelsey to turn it down when he's making music downstairs, when I'm filming, but it, I love it too. I love hearing him make music. Um, so I hope you love it too, because I'm not gonna ask him to turn it down anymore, because this is what life in this house is like. Basically, I used the data on how many cards I'd sold to make, decide relative to that how many of each design I am going to reprint right now to like restock my shop with based on their popularity in the last year. I don't know if that makes any sense, but uh, it makes sense in my brain, and that's all that matters.
Love you. Hello, happy Thursday. I am about halfway through my to-do list for the day. I've done all of my sticker sheets, I've done all the scoring of my remaining cards, and I cut the edges off the print, so I just have to cut their chipboard backings and then like actually pack them in the bags, although I have to leave one out of each to do photos of. I still want to today like finish folding these cards, updating the stock on Shopify for how many cards I actually have now, um, I think I want to do the same thing for prints as well, and now that I think about it, I just, after packing that wholesale order, reminded me that I need to recount what I have for prints and make sure that is accurate in my Shopify as well, because I have been too flexible about that in the past, and then just like made stuff on demand, but I don't want to be doing that anymore. I really want to bake some peanut butter cookies because my friend gave me one that she made the other day, and it was so good, and I want to have a batch to eat myself for the next little while of making a batch of cookies and putting them in the freezer so you can just kind of take out one or two at a time um, and it's nice because if I only have two taken out of the freezer and they've been thawing I can't just have another one because they're still frozen that's my sneaky trick to have cookies but not too many cookies at a time one other thing that I definitely need to do today is keep working on my dad's illustration of him with Dexter because his birthday is on Saturday and it is Thursday. I really like being able to work on stuff by coming back to it repeatedly instead of trying to like pound out the whole thing in one sitting because I see things, I see new things when I return to it with, with fresh eyes. So this is where it's at right now. I think it's coming along really well. I think that I've captured my dad's essence pretty well. It was funny, I before I added the goatee, he looked exactly like my brother. I was like, okay, I'm going in the right direction then. And then as soon as I put the goatee on, it became my dad. <laughs> my dad looks really good. Dexter, I'm not quite happy with how his, his eyes in particular, because I tried to, he's got like lighter coloring around his eyes and trying to capture that I think is actually making it look too much not like him. Like it's too, I think it'll look more like him if I actually just make his whole face black. So that's what I'm gonna try, I think. But before that, I'm gonna go take Penny for a walk and I'm going to drop off some mail because I just, just now got an Etsy order of one of my Valentine's cards and I wanna get that in the mail before mail pickup comes today because it's a Valentine's card and I wanna make sure that the person gets it with lots of time before Valentine's Day, even though it's, it's going to New Brunswick, so it's staying within the country. So it shouldn't be, shouldn't be too high of a risk that it doesn't make it in time. I don't know if I'm gonna get to this today or not, but I am very excited. I've been struggling to find the right price tags to use at markets. I've experimented with a bunch of different things and haven't quite found anything I'm happy with. And for some reason I never, what I've wanted is like little tiny chalkboards to use chalk pens on because I can very easily update them. I can give them a little bit of like my creative flair instead of just being like plain price tags. And I wanted something that would stand up on its own so I can put it wherever it needs to go on the table. And it never occurred to me to ask, check on Amazon to see if they had anything like that. And of course, as soon as I did remember to look on Amazon, or maybe I just wasn't searching the right thing, I found the perfect thing. So they're these little mini chopboards. They're actually quite light. I was expecting them to have a bit more weight to them, but they seem quite sturdy. Like they're, they'll tip over if you mess with them. And they actually, now that I think about it, outdoors are probably light enough that they blow over in the wind, which could be a problem. I'll figure out something to weigh them down if I use them in an outdoor event, but I also bought a set of chalk pens to use to decorate them. And I already did like a little sign because I'm, oh, I'm gonna have a Valentine's display at this market for my two cards on my sticker sheet because I want it to be very clear. Like these are the Valentine's seasonal things because this is, this market is 10 days before Valentine's day. So I did that one already, but I do want to make, remake all of my price tags with when I do in-person markets, I always do like buy this many 
for this price. Like for example, in person, when you buy my stickers, they're $5 each, but it's three for 12. Same thing with the sticker sheets, which you can mix and match as well. I found people are usually pretty excited about that because they'll be like, oh, I love this sticker sheet and this sticker. And I'm like, well, you can get them both and one more thing for only $12. And they're like, wow, uh, which I appreciate because I'm also a sucker for that kind of a deal. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot today about, I'm re-listening to Braiding Sweetgrass. I read it the first time and I'm listening to it as an audiobook. A theme that has come up often is the idea that especially in indigenous culture, it's very strongly embraced the idea of taking only what you need, um, which I really love because I think unfortunately in a consumer society, we're kind of tricked by all kinds of advertisements and influences in the media to feel like more is more and you need to spend money on stuff and accumulate things. And I love things as much as the next person, but recentering and thinking about approaching consumerism with the mindset of taking only what you need is really grounding for me, not only as a consumer, but also as a business owner. Because sometimes I get consumed by the guilt that the world doesn't need another business selling stuff that is not necessary. What I do believe in is that spending money on things that bring you joy and are gonna bring other people moments of joy can be worthwhile when you don't do it frivolously. And in my experience, people don't buy from, like I don't feel like my business attracts the kind of shopping where people just buy for the sake of buying. Like they, people seem to make really thought through decisions about what they're gonna purchase from me. And like the idea of the marketplace and exchange of goods is not problematic in itself. And the desire to make a living from what you're passionate about, there's nothing inherently problematic about that. I think the problem starts when you start using tactics to try and convince people to get more than what they need or what they really want and will really bring them joy. And I'm really conscientious of that and that knowing that helps ease my anxiety and it is perfectly okay and acceptable and even another concept in the book is the idea of sharing your gifts with the world and I think that my inherent drive and love for creativity and making things that spark little moments of joy is part of my gift. I think everybody has several if not many and I think my natural drive and desire to do this is my way of put uh, one of my ways of putting my gift out into the world and that I can do it without going against my values that I shouldn't and as much as possible others should try not to take more than what they need whether that means buying more food than you need whether that means taking things just because they're free whether that means just buying extensively in general I think a lot of it comes back to authenticity like I am trying to make sure that I don't create a business built around just making stuff that's gonna sell because it's gonna sell I really want to make stuff that is truly authentic to me and I only put it out into the world to share for other people to potentially purpose purchase if it speaks to them as well when it truly feels authentic to me I think that all ties back in together of both of these concepts that I'm trying to embrace because I very wholeheartedly believe in them. I hope that made made sense. That might have just been a bit of a nonsensical ramble. Sometimes I find I feel like I make no sense and then when I listen to myself back later I go, yeah, that does, that does make sense. But anyways, thanks for coming to my Thursday TED Talk. Good dogs, good. And let me dry your paws.
high high. It is a balmy three degrees in the Edmonton area today. What the frick kind of January is this? This is not, this is not normal. All the snow is gonna melt. It's gonna be super slushy in a bit here. It's gonna be interesting. I hope my fingers are crossed that it doesn't get really melty and then immediately get cold again because that will be a problem for the roads being pure ice. These are the glasses I got that are transition lenses, which I am still getting used to. It's weird, I can't really tell that they're transitioning, which is kind of nice, I guess, but sometimes I feel like I still need more sun protection than what they give me. They're doing, they're doing their job. I am heading out on errands to get a white tablecloth. Hopefully HomeSense will have one. Maybe some like Valentine's-y decor if I can find something cute and like relatively practical there as well. I need to drop off the wholesale order that we packed together yesterday. I need to pick up a smoothie for Kelsey because he is not feeling well today. I need to pick up my order of business cards that I placed a little while ago because I have a market next weekend and I need more business cards and get a few groceries. It's Saturday, it's my dad's birthday today, so we're gonna end off this vlog with the reveal of the final illustration of my dad and Dexter that I've been working on in bits in this vlog. I'm really proud of this one. I feel like I captured De Dexter's essence very well, and my dad's too, actually. I think I'm getting a lot better at drawing people and animals in my style while still making them look like them because my style is so stylized that sometimes it just looks like it could be anybody. But um, I'm finding my, my groove when it comes to figuring out which details to add to bring in a little bit more distinctiveness. Yeah, I want to do a few more pieces like this for like different people, maybe even just of like my own dogs because I want to be able to put it on my website and share at markets and stuff to basically offer my services for commissions um, by showing like this is the kind of stuff that I would like to do. I really really get a lot out of being able to do something like this to help someone remember someone. It's a really, I think it's a really beautiful way to remember someone who has passed or some furry friend. Yeah, so I actually printed a bigger copy of it that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna cut this and have it on display at the market I think and put a little sign on it that says like, I do commission, like ask me about it or something like that. As always, thank you so much for watching. There is so much good content out there and it means the world that you would spend your time here with me watching mine. It really helps me in a lot of ways, so thank you. I appreciate you very much. I hope you are having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one.